Hey everyone! In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to write a switch statement and how to do that in a state machine pattern, which is probably one of the better ways to use switch statements. Uh, we're going to show you how to call and reference that uh, switch statement or that enumerator value from anywhere else in your Unity project. And then we're going to talk about where you should declare your enumerators that you're going to use in the switch statements. Okay, let's go take a look. I'm going to show you the code in a moment, but first I just want to show you what that code is going to refer to. This is a prototype of a game I'm working on where I use switch statements quite frequently. One of the ways I use them is for these enemies here that are moving towards my player. I have to know whether these enemies are alive, whether they're dead, whether they're moving, whether they're attacking, whether they're being knocked back, or whether they're taking damage. A switch statement is a great way to set the enemy state so I can know exactly what each enemy is doing at each moment of time. Let's take a look at how that looks in the backend. Here's the code for this portion of the game. Now you can see that in this script I have two state machines and both of these are using switch statements. I have one for mobile unit states which we're going to take a look at. If I open this up I have four methods inside. The main one is to set the new state, and this is what uses the switch statement. To set the state, I'm calling, I'm passing through an enumerator value, which is a new state, and this enumerator is right up here. It's a public enum mobile unit state, and it's basically saying that my enemies can either be alive or dead or out of play. And then you can see I have three methods underneath to handle each one of these possibilities. Taking a look at this set attacker state, the first thing we do is we set a protected uh, variable here called mobile unit state to be equal to the state that we're passing through. Now, if I hit F12 on this, it's going to take me up here to where this is declared. And you can see that this is a protected mobile state, uh, which and the word keyword protected is similar to private if you're not familiar with it. But it also means any enemies that inherit from my attacker have also have access to this. If that doesn't make any sense to you, don't worry about it. it does, you don't really need to know it for this video. But then also I have a public version of this mobile unit state. And if you notice, this starts with a capital A and that's just, this is a naming convention. Private or protected variables start with an underscore to help me quickly look at a glance and realize that these are either private or protected. And a capital letter at the start lets me know that this is public. But in this case, we're only using a getter, which means we can reference this attacker state, but we can't directly set it from uh, this value. So we can't set it accidentally from another script. Now going back here, we have a switch statement and I've already written this, but I'm just gonna kind of write it again so you can see the process. So number one, I'm going to write switch and then we're gonna open parentheses and we can either pass through mobile unit state or we can pass through new state. It doesn't really matter. They do the same thing at this point. Then we write the, key, the keyword case. And the great thing about using an enumerator value for a switch statement is it automatically brings up all the possibilities for us. So I can see here in the quick drop down menu, it's telling me that it that this case needs the keyword mobile unit state, followed by either alive or dead or out of play. There's, those are my only three options. Now it's still giving me a red squiggly. And that's because it's looking for the keyword break so I can get out of here. And it also needs a colon right after it so I can write whatever I want in here. Now, I could write code for what it should happen uh, if we determine that the attacker is alive, but I like to keep things clean. So here I would just write handle alive and call that method and then break out of this statement. I would also write a comment here just to help me remember what's going to happen. Now this is pretty obvious, this is going to happen when the attacker is alive, but we can just say uh, called when the attacker is alive. And then we would do the same thing for all the other states. Now since I already have that written, I'm going to just show you what the complete switch statement looks like here. And again, we have this uh, handle out of play, handle alive, handle dead, followed by the keyword break. We also have the keyword default, which just means if none of these options can be met, it should do whatever is written here under default. Now, these are the only three options that are possible, but at some point in the future, I might want to add something else in here, like take damage, and then I could forget to write 
a case for take damage, so default will just catch that and tell me when I try to call it that nothing is set for take damage. But as for now, that doesn't exist. Also, another thing you can do with switch statements is if you kind of have an or, like you want to ha handle the same thing if uh, you want to handle out of play if out of play or live is called, you could write case uh, mobile unit state alive. And now it's going to give me a squiggly here because I'm calling it twice. But basically it's saying if either one of these is called, just do whatever it says right underneath. But I want different states, different things to happen depending on which case is called. You can also use an integer or a string for your switch, but it's generally a really good idea in most cases to try to use an enumerator, but integers are also okay. So now if I move a little further down in this same script, you can see that I have uh, an update here and don't worry about protected virtual void, what that means if you're not sure. It's not relevant for this, but in update we're calling handle movement and so this means that handle movement is being called every frame. And in this every frame, we're checking what is happening with this mobile unit state. Uh, so again, we're not, we're not setting it here. We're just referencing it to make some decisions at this point, which is every frame. And here again, I'm calling a live and out of play side by side each other or above and below each other, which means that I don't care if it's a live or out of play it should do whatever is written in this subsequent switch statement here for uh, of the alive state. It doesn't matter what it says in here. Uh, just know that if it's alive or out of play, then we want to do this stuff. And if we're dead, then we want to stop all movement. And again, we have the default uh, with an error saying there's nothing set for this particular state, uh, which hopefully doesn't need to be called. But if there is, if I'm using a state that I haven't set up, then yeah, it would tell me and it would say, ah, you idiot, you forgot to set something here. Now, if I go back up here to the mobile unit state and I hit Shift F12 on this public version, I can see where it's being referenced. And here, well, it's actually right here in this move attacker, which is in that same region. Here, we're referencing this switch statement with, with by using an if. Uh, I'm typically not a fan of using an if to reference my switch statements, but you can do it too. Sometimes it's just quicker and dirtier and easier. You can basically do it either way. Which should you declare your enumerators that you're going to use with your switch statements? Well, in this example, I've declared here under the namespace combat, which means that this enumerator is available to any script that is uh, either within the namespace combat or is using it up here as a using statement. I could also declare it within the attacker class, uh, but then I would have to reference the attacker class if I wanted access to this enumerator. So as an example, let me go over to here to game manager, which is not part of this combat namespace, uh, and it's not using it either. So if I wanted to try to write the name of this mobile unit state here, it's not gonna come up. Mobile unit state, uh, it just doesn't recognize it. But if I type using combat for my namespace, Suddenly it turns green and it says, oh yeah, we want that mobile unit state. Uh, finally, if we wanted to call and set uh, something from here, we could find ourselves an attacker. We could just say, uh, in this case, attacker, attacker equals find object of type, attacker. It would just find one at random in this example, but I'm just doing this quick and dirty, so I don't care. Now, you can see here, here is my uh, variable alive state, but we can also say, uh, actually, what was the name of that other variable? It was mobile unit, it was attacker state. Uh, oh, I, I probably should have called this mobile unit state for consistency, but uh, here, if I wanted to say attacker state, um, I wouldn't be able to set it this way because it's only allowing me to get the value of it, which is actually what we want. So I couldn't say this is equal to anything because it's going to give me red squiggly and it's going to say uh, it's read only, which is proper. We don't want to set the variable directly when we're using a state machine. We want to set it through the state machine. So in this case, I would say attacker dot set alive state 
and then it's going to just give me the options and I can set uh, whatever I want. That is actually the other state machine, but I could say set attacker state and then it's going to give me alive or dead or out of play. I don't know which attack this is because there's many of them, uh, but this is just how I would go about setting uh, that uh, switch statement with my state machine. Now, one more useful way you can declare enumerators, if you just want them generally available to your entire project, is you can just give them their own script. And you can either make a script just for enumerators, or you can even just make an enumerator its own script. And we can just, as an example, make a script here and call it example enum, and open that up. And within this example enum script, I'm just gonna hit control A, delete everything, and then say public enum, example enum, and then just say test one, test two, test three. And now basically any script in my entire project is gonna be able to reference this. Go down here, just initialization, sure. And say example enum, and look, there it is. I have access to it. It's not in a namespace. It's just its own individual script and I can access that from anywhere. Just be careful not to get overwhelmed with having too many enumerators done this way or you might drive yourself crazy. So that's basically it for how to write switch statements and how to use a state machine in your Unity project. I hope you found this helpful. You can always ask questions in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching.